Uh, let's do a show and transition. Yeah, okay. And three and two and one. It's Sunday, July 21st, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. I've been determined in length, episode number 517. Uh, and uh, apparently bidets are what we're talking about today i don't know what is he <laughs> something like that that was the pre-show okay a day a, a day amazing well we're talking about something completely is, is we maybe we need to find like a like sound clip for this one since we have it for others but it's like uh, i don't know uh, what is yeah all i can think of is <gasps> there we go <laughs> I don't I don't What is that? <laughs> okay, I don't know. I, I I just I'm just using what I got. Anyways, Gary. <laughs> what is it that we're talking about? Uh to continue on with our what is series that we started up a little while ago. We did an episode on what is self love. And during that episode, we actually made a reference to, like, the opposite of self-love being self-hate. And then last month, we talked about pride. So, uh, conceptually, you know, what is self-hatred? You know, and I think people probably think of it, like, in really simple terms, you know, that you don't like um, yourself in general, like, but I think it goes much deeper than that. I think there's a lot of stuff that we as a community battle with. Okay. Um, so let me, let me point out a couple of things and then y'all can debate with me on whether or not that would be like self hatred. Okay. Uh, smoking, drinking, doing drugs, uh, dieting, to unhealthiness um like modeling yourself after others to fit into the crowd okay do those sound familiar at all i mean well, yeah i can see yeah. those things so you're saying all those things to fit into the crowd or like those are separate things and then the well i think that the they're behaviors that like exemplify the LGBT like community. Smoking. L- I want to say LGBT. Drinking. I don't even want to like go that far. Well, so well, okay. Why I do people do trying, those things though? I think what he's trying to get at is that there are oftentimes like for many people, there's peer pressure and the peer pressure is brought on by that need to be um, part of the crowd and part of, and be liked. Yeah. And sometimes we, in fact, do things in order to fit in. Um, as someone who grew up with parents who were working at Philip Morris and um, um, what have you, I was pretty much told never to smoke. Like, mm-hmm. like I couldn't, could never. Like, it was a rule in our house. Like, if I got caught smoking, I was due for a spanking kind of thing. That's the way it was. So I've never... Not never, because I have. <laughs> um, I don't smoke, um, but that's more of a not not because of that, but also because of personal choice. But I never, I do remember like that whole desire to do it because everyone else was doing it. You know, you, I worked for um, Kentucky Kingdom, which is a music park in Louisville, um, for um, for a year for a summer, and. 
you know, the thing to do was to like go out after the park closed and like walk around the park and smoke cigarettes and have fun. And I couldn't do it. I didn't, I, that was the thing. And like, if you, when you came in the next day, they were talking about all the things that they did while they were doing that. Like, and it felt kind of weird. And then to add that to like, I don't know, the, the, I don't know about putting in perspective with the LGBT community. Cause I've kind of now I don't care, you know? Um, well, so here's, here's the, where I'm coming for this, like pondering it mm-hmm. because I think we do a lot of things to try to fit in. Mm-hmm. And so I was pointing out those like per- particular behaviors because I think people don't intrinsically naturally do them because they really enjoy doing them. <laughs> like there's there's something to be done in moderation and then some of those behaviors are just excess. Yeah. And the excess part is more like where I'm thinking about in terms of like what drives a person to do those things to, to, because they want to fit in? Well, why do they care about fitting in? Okay. I can like, see that. And and, there, and I speak from uh, as a person who's had that experience. When I first came out, you know, it was I wanted to be accepted by the new tribe that I found. And then uh-huh. more so after I got out of college and I was back, you know, here in my hometown and I was going out to the bar and I was finding myself not fitting in. And so I started observing and paying attention to the fact that, like, you know, you should be a certain size and you should, you know, be tanned with white teeth and have a certain kind of attire. And, you know, you drank and you smoked. Like, I mean, there was this whole culture. Mm -hmm. And in order to be in a part of that, you had to do that. But I think it takes a lot of, like, um, self-value, like self-esteem maybe to Mm -hmm. not do that but that means like you're a really strong sense of yourself i think if you do these things because you want to fit in the question is like is that you know some form of self-hatred that you don't accept yourself like you don't appreciate who you are naturally the way you are and therefore you feel you have to modify yourself in order to be able to fit in yeah I mean, I can see that. I can, t- I can totally see that being a thing. Some things are, maybe you may have some other mental, psychological kind of, you know, things going on with you. But for some of them, it is that whole matter of wanting to belong. We all want to belong. You know, we all want to be. And to that point, we sometimes seek drastic measures to, like you said, fit in and to be a part of it and we're losing ourselves in that process we can lose ourselves in that process um you know uh yeah i mean i can i can talk about a lot of things that can get to deep-seated personal issues and traumas um as someone who um grew up in a very opposite me community and and lifestyle like going to school i wasn't the only black kid because that's not true you know Mm -hmm. but there were there are very few like smart like super smart black kids and it was often seen as being white because i was so because i was going into school and going to school and getting you know education and um and i I didn't like it because I didn't have friends. I didn't have other people because the, for many years, my biggest issue was having to be that I was in that middle. Like for some of the black kids, I was too white. And for some of the white kids, I was too black. Well, obviously. And therefore I couldn't really fit in. But, um, and there were other things going on too, like realizing, Hey, I like boys too. (laughs) So, (laughs) That didn't help things either, um, but it did lead to a lot of like personal self, you know, self esteem issues, personal self hatred, and I ended up. Um, what I ended up doing was what I felt was right, and that was focus on education, get your degree, and then get the fuck out. Like that was my goal. Like. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm from a big city, you still have those like 
get away, move away, get, you know, leave where you were because it's not necessarily problematic. It's problematic. Um, it was a problematic state for me. So I'm happy that I, while I consider Louisville home, it is not my home. Like it's where I was born and raised. I can say it like that. Um, but I, like people have often asked me like, why don't you, why didn't you move back to Louisville when you um, graduated high school or graduated college? And I was like, well, I'm from there. To me, it's the same as for some people who live in a smaller town and don't want to go back to their small town. Mm. You know, why go back to the things that were so, in some ways potentially traumatic are um, when you can create your own life and do your own thing. Right. And, and I think, you know, everyone kind of picks and chooses for themselves what seems best. But I guess what I'm I'm getting at in some ways is whether or not we're aware that what we think is best for us is actually self-sabotaging. Like that we're that we dislike ourselves. We have our own like whatever percentage of self-hatred and therefore we do certain things. And I think of it from these terms, like if the if the if our community is so, you know, proud then why do we abuse ourselves and mm. i don't mean abuse like kink fun i mean literally like why do we abuse ourselves physically and mentally you know to be you know who we are in some fashion i think it's very rare that a person authentically appreciates who they are and accepts themselves fully gives no fucks and like lives a happy life that way i think you know there's there's always something to be said for balance but we accept the marketing that comes at us mm -hmm. we buy into it you know so if you're cool if you're hip if you're whatever you know you smoke you drink you you know party you xyz or whatever and well yeah like that's that was important in our past as a culture um like we connected through these behaviors because we live, we felt we lived in the shadows, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we have to continue on that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just, it's just one of the things it's, the so that's kind of where I'm coming from is like, you know, I think that there's lots of different degrees and severity of like self hatred you know, obviously if people are doing themselves physical harm, yeah, like I've known people that, you know, have, um, attempted suicide i've known people that uh, have cut themselves you know have done things that's a whole different level necessarily what i'm getting at but it all still has the same root like there's something going on that you feel that this is like an, a reasonable expression of how to address whatever your stress is or your situation mm -hmm. with that in some way okay. um and those probably weren't really like the best you know examples to use but that's you know it's kind of what I think of, you know, when it comes to the opposite of self-love is, you know, self-hate, like, takes a lot of different forms and it comes in different ways. And um, I think we don't really take the time to, like, look at coping mechanisms um, mm -hmm. and whatever that thing is in that case. And I think what's probably disappointing to me the most is that because there's so much going on in our personal lives and in, like, the broader world, it's very difficult to, like, pay attention and address stuff because we're overstimulated like we're overwhelmed there's too many things to do or to pay attention to or feel that you need to like be tapped into that you just kind of lose sight of oh maybe you know it would be better if i did this instead of that or every time you know you self judge mm -hmm. and you're, you know you are critical of yourself that you think about you know what drives that or where it comes from or you know those kind of things um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of where my thoughts were coming from in terms of that is I think, I personally think overall as a community, we are far more critical of ourselves. And I think that criticism is driven by some version of self-hatred. Mm -hmm. And I realize that might seem pretty severe, but and, why, why else would we do it? You know? And it also can come from the fact that we are often criticized. You know, mm -hmm. you you can go through life dealing with those people that because you have these feelings or these thoughts of, you know, queerness, as it were, you are seen as different. You see it all the time. You see it in the media. You see it on, you know, 
if you go to church, you see it in the churches. You, you know, it's everywhere where being something different is wrong. And that can lead to some deep-seated, you know, personal hatred. You know, you don't like who you are. I know I dealt with it. I've gotten over it in some ways. I still kind of deal with it in some ways, you know. Um, do I ever wish I were different? In some ways I do at times. I think that's a, and that's a level of, you know, a certain level of self-hatred, not loving who you are right now. You know, would you, what can you do to fix yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why do you need to fix yourself? Right. I mean, and, and, I want to say this, like there's, there's healthy criticism. Like you can be mm -hmm. critical of yourself and be like, you know, do I really need to have a second dessert with dinner? Um, you <laughs> yes. know, I mean, there's, there's certain the things is, yeah. that, like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, but you know, the, like there's, there's this whole balance act of where you are and what you need versus what you want. And I think that we, you're right, Damon. I, I don't disagree with you about, you know, like how we, we are treated. I think we internalize a lot of stuff. I think mm -hmm. that we're hypercritical um, of ourselves because other people were critical of us. And we felt, and maybe this is changing generationally. So that's where I'm kind of like, I don't know if I really want to say like the T in the Q in the community maybe are facing this as much because they may be going through their own. Well, I think they're going through some, but I think they're also facing this renaissance, or at least what we're seeing exhibited, is a lot of this strength of, I'm just going to be me. Like, fuck all y'all. Like, take it, leave it. I don't give a shit. Like, I got, you know, six different colors of hair. I express myself this way. I don't deal with your binary bullshit. Like, you know, and those are just exaggerated, like, you know, concepts and platitudes. But, the, like, when I see that kind of stuff, I'm like, wow. Like, it takes a lot of, like strength of an individual to kind of carry themselves that way mm -hmm. like i was getting my hair cut the other day and my barber was like talking about this woman who's walking down the street with a bunch of kids and how she's got like blue hair and i could tell he was being critical of it so i sort of countered and i was like well i'm like i see a lot more people these days you know coloring their hair they have tattoos and piercings and mm -hmm. you know i was trying to like lead sort of in a way of saying like now this is more prevalent, like this is more acceptable. But I could tell that he was already from the beginning of this point of the conversation, like not okay with it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we're kind of about the same age. Like we're not all that different in terms of like age, which is what was sort of surprising me. Cause I was like, what do you give a fuck? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause I was yeah. like, like, like I'm very much like live and let live. I'm like, you want to like, you know, Die turn your, blue and yeah. Right, you know, and it's like, and have tats all over? Go right ahead. Like, don't bother me none. Um, and that was kind of my whole point of that, where that conversation was going to go. But I found it interesting because he was being critical of her. And there was a part of me that's like, you don't even know her. Like, what, what do you, what's up, you know, what's up with oh, that? So like, she's I, the cool mom. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, you know. Maybe or, she is. I mean, usually, because I, I believe this to a point, when you're critical of others, you're actually being critical of yourself. Like, True. you're comparing yourself against them, and there's something about them that you don't like, and then the reality, maybe you're jealous of them, or you wish you could be that way, or, like, there's just something going on in that case, which, yeah. in a way, says to me that there's some self-hatred going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, the most often times that, you know, that's why that whole what people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones thing is kind of out there is that whole idea about like, you know, you kind of can sometimes be looking at yourself and seeing something about that thing or that person, or maybe you're jealous, maybe you're envious, maybe, you know, you see this woman who's rocking blue hair and like, you never got an opportunity to do that because you either felt you couldn't because society pressure, whatever. Right. And now you're seeing that you're like, well, fuck, like I can't, I couldn't do that. And this person has like children and like, you know, she's, you know, doing it and doing her and being her. And you're like, well, fuck, I could, I never had an opportunity. So you're kind of like, well, damn, like, why couldn't I? Right. And some people might not be like that self-aware. Like they may not, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like they just might be critical and they might not have the capacity or take the moment to be like, wow, why am I being so negative? Or why am mm -hmm. I, you know, hating on her? Cause I don't even know her from nothing. Um, and the know her from nothing, right? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> in the live chat of Arrow said, to not fit in somewhere is pretty devastating since humans are social creatures. Speaking as a high schooler, doing things to, quote, fit in, end quote, to a group or clique is very common. Because, like, think of it this way. We do this all the time, actually. Like, yes, you do it in the public education or even in the private education school system. But even when you leave the education system, it still happens. Mm -hmm. Unless you work from home or are closed off from the world, like, there's constantly social pressure of some sort Mm -hmm. to look a certain way, do a certain thing, go with, like, you know, like... I was doing training recently for this new project, and some of my coworkers, we had an hour lunch, and they were like, you want to come out back with us? And I was like, no, it's okay. They're like, oh, come on. And I was like, actually, I am just a couple miles from home. I'm going to drive my happy fat ass home and make my lunch and get my mail, and then I'll be back. <laughs> it was just a random passing kind of thing. But there was a little peer pressure in that, like in that oh, moment. yeah. To be a part of the gang, because we're all together at work, and, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just had already had plans. Yeah, you and, had already made your plan. You already like, I'm gonna do this. Like, why should I change my plan? Because you guys are here. I mean, and agreed. Sometimes, well, yeah. You, you also have to realize, especially in like situations like you were just demonstrating, that sometimes it's not necessarily peer pressure; it's pers- persuasion. Uh, because you're like, no, unfortunately, I got a thing. You know, it's not that I don't necessarily want to. It's just I've already got other plans. Um, Mm -hmm. And they're just persuading you to do otherwise. And they're not because they they weren't they may have like pushed a little. But did they like push really hard, like try to just like steer you away or something? Or did they just or did they go, oh, okay? Well, (laughs) maybe a a couple pushes, but then just let you go. Right. I don't disagree with what you're saying, Jeff. But my, Mm -hmm. my point is like when you leave the education system, you don't escape or get away from these concepts of togetherness and fitting in. Yeah. Like, and that in and of itself is a pressure that I think people sometimes aren't aware of. So like, and there's all sorts of things that can happen. Like for example, something that's not supposed to happen in the workplace is solicitation, but somebody knows somebody who's got a niece, got a nephew, got a grandchild, got a kid who's like, in the Boy Scouts, in the Girl Scouts, in the band, in the sport thing, whatever. They're selling this, hawking that, like, you know, doing this thing. It's a fundraiser. Don't you want a candy bar, Damon? It's only a dollar. It helps a good cause. Um, you know, <laughs> and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, technically, in most workplaces, it's illegal. But, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. but like, like, there's like, there's a little bit of a pressure in that in some ways. And I think mm-hmm. that, like, we may make decisions based off of how we're going to be viewed by others. Yeah. And that's the pressure issue. Like, I don't disagree with you about the concept of persuasion, but I think like it takes a strong self individual Mm -hmm. to like have their own conviction, I guess, and to not Mm -hmm. be swayed by something. So, Mm -hmm. so here's, here's another question kind of to loop back around, because I think we're starting to veer off topic because if the, in the what you're you're representing is is more of it's it doesn't feel like it's really about self hatred but something else the desire to fit in you don't necessarily hate yourself you just want other people to like you but when but se- I, self self hatred I think works a little bit differently um, it's and is probably much more devastating sort of thing than just like, like, well, I just kind of want to fit in and, and such. Well, I, I can't see the trying to fit in necessarily be self-hatred unless you're really hating something about yourself as yourself and not doing anything about it. Right. So, this is this is where I'm coming from on this. I think that self hatred has many different like uh, levels to it, or like strengths, like you know, and and like percentage, I guess, is what I want to say. And and hatred is such a strong word. I think that's where people get tripped up and they think, like you know, oh, I hate myself. Yeah, but like you don't have to hate yourself. You could be unhappy with yourself. But why are you unhappy? Like where does that come from? Is 
part of where I'm going with this because I think self hatred comes in many different like disguises, let's say, or different like ways that it appears in our lives. And to give in to do things with other people, like there's there's if you're genuinely going to enjoy it as an activity or whatever it is, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But if you do it because you feel you have mm-hmm. to do it, yeah, that's an inclusion issue. And it's like, well, why do you want to be included? Why do you want to be accepted? Do you understand where I'm like where I'm going with this? Like it comes from a deeper place within you. Like you must be you must have an a thing within you that you don't feel comfortable, that you don't feel accepted. And that in and of itself is is a version of self hatred. Like it's mm-hmm. hatred's probably the trip up, like people think it's such a severe word, but it's that you're not happy with something about yourself or and it could be that you know like you just don't have many you know colleagues or friends or whatever it is um in that case so and i just think that we're more susceptible as a broader community because we already get messaged as kind of what like damon i think was referring to earlier that we are not accepted or not, you mm-hmm. know, universally equal or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we maybe it's just that. I'm not really understanding the concept. Um maybe. so I th- I think of it this way. Like it's it's kind of it's it's really digging down into a different level. So it's um to use like the example I was like saying. So let's say that Damon and I work together and I approach Damon about um you know joining uh i don't know like the group after work for drinks or something i already know that damon likes to drink and i don't mean like fall down drunk like drink drunk (laughs) drunk although that has happened on this podcast um (laughs) shut up (laughs) peer pressure every jeffrey's birthday but what i mean is um Damon's talked openly about that. He likes to drink or whatever, but you know, Damon has to decide for himself whether or not it like fits into his personal schedule. If you know, he really wants to do it. What's the purpose of this? Like, would it be really be a good bonding, like kind of activity in Mm -hmm. some ways, you know, those kind of things. But the reality is, is that if he doesn't want to do it and he says no, that he can't or whatever, I could, gently reply in a persuasion about it like for him to consider it but i think unless you're like really aware of yourself you might think you know well i probably should because we don't hang out very much and da 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 and so you do that but then you start realizing pretty quickly like oh that's yeah no this isn't my thing like i probably should have not come or something of that sort but you choose to stay. Why? Because you're already there. Because now you're already doing this thing. And it could be more mm-hmm. awkward to go away. And so this whole thing kind of blows up on you. Instead of you from the beginning just kind of, I guess, like standing by your conviction or whatever your thing is and saying, no, I don't really plan on doing that or don't want to or, you know, whatever the, the, the issue is. All of that is, I think, representative of when you choose to do things that you don't necessarily want to do or you continue doing them even after you've realized like this is not something that I'm interested in. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, having sex with somebody. Like initially you were all hot and bothered. You thought you were into it and now you're doing it. You're like, "Mm, nah, like Mm -hmm. I've changed my mind. Like you have bad stinky breath or (laughs) like don't wash your ass or, you know, (laughs) I'm just being silly, but something's changed about, but then you feel obligated because you've already gone through the motions, you know, you've decided to do the hookup and, you know, they're in your home, whatever. Um, I have no problem taking a bitch out. <laughs> that's No, that's not true. I know that's not true. I said that. Sometimes it, I can get, I've been there where you're like, whatever like i know it sounds awful but sometimes you're just like okay like you've already made the decision you've already done everything so okay, we're done now goodbye yeah true that that's kind of the thing or you find some convenient way to get out um, right 
So I think that we have I, it just just popped in my head. I think that we have microaggressions within mm-hmm. ourselves of self-hatred. And these are the decisions that we make that are probably not in our own best interest, but we still do them anyways. Mm-hmm. So like say for example, you go to hook up with somebody and you're like really hot and bothered and you want to have sex with them and you want them to use a condom, but for some reason y'all like didn't go to the local gay bar and get a fresh free supply. Or you didn't go to a bear event where they just hand them out like candy. So you don't have one and it's like, would you really want to? But there's a part of you that's like, mm, I'm not really sure. Like, you know, I haven't gotten on prep yet. And I've asked them, like, you know, maybe you've taken the point of like having a conversation about precaution, but you don't have like a hundred percent faith in the good buddy that you're hooking up with. So you the make good a decision buddy that you met on double list. Right. You know, um, <laughs> the, the thing is, is that you have to make a decision in that moment. Like, do you stand truer to yourself and be like, mm, let's just, you know, jerk each other off instead of actually like fucking Doing and having anything. intercourse. Right. But if you make the decision to go ahead and have the intercourse, and there's any regret to that. That regret is coming from a place in which you most likely really didn't want to, but you made the decision anyways. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean. Like, like there's a there's a thing going on there as to why we do that. And I'm by no means like a perfectionist Connect. about this, like an expert. I'm probably an expert on the side of like doing all the things you're not supposed to do. Um, that's not completely true, but that's what I think of myself. Like I beat myself up about stuff. So that's, yeah, I think like, like beating yourself up about, you know, why did I do this thing or blah, blah, blah. Or I don't know, like, um, maybe you No, I'm not going to use that example. It's too close to home. Um, so (laughs) maybe you see a recipe on Pinterest and you decide to make something, but you live by yourself or there's just two of you in your home and you make like an entire dish of something. And you have some of it and you're like, oh my God, this is really good. And then the next thing you know, like you're watching YouTube videos or you're binging Stranger Things or who knows what you're doing or playing games and you have polished off the whole thing. This sounds Mm -hmm. very specific. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) Um, But then afterwards, you know, you're like, oh my God, like you can't move and you feel physically unwell because you just like ate an entire tortilla lasagna or whatever um, again it, very specific it's not this is all off the top of my head um but the the thing is is like now personal you like experience it's not my personal <laughs> experience um not that specific at least again oddly specific so it must be personal experience. <laughs> my whole point is jeff is that like you like you you end up doing things and then you end up regretting them. And it's usually mm-hmm. in the regret is where I think I'm talking about like this microaggression of self hatred mm-hmm. is like, why did I do that? Like what, what it was the point of it? Like, did it really pay off for what I wanted it to be? Cause don't get me wrong. You can make decisions that are not necessarily maybe the best decision and be perfectly True. fine with them. You could have unprotected bareback sex and get raw dogged and like take three loads and one sex experience and be completely happy about it and never look back and not even like reconsider it. Mm-hmm. That's quite possible, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I'm talking about is, <laughs> That you when you don't like when you're not okay with it when you make right. that choice to do it because you feel you either had to or wanted to or 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 in a, you know you don't like yourself enough that you feel like whatever I'll do it because right maybe they'll like me more maybe they'll call me afterwards. Well, I mean, like Owen said in the live chat, uh, not to put his business out there, but he did put it in the post. Um, I finished off a guy without being you know into them out of politeness. Been there, done that. Been there. Like, <laughs> I think all been there. I, 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 I don't know if necessarily if you're being polite uh, in that way, if that's necessarily self-hatred. I would consider that well, more of not a pleasant experience, but you probably quickly learn something like, mm, I don't think we'll do that again. 
Okay. But hey, fine. you're here. Let's get you but, off and then wave you goodbye. But here's the, but okay, that's fine. So maybe not in that moment. I've had plenty of this. But okay. But the, why do you keep doing it? Well, like it's usually with different bitten. guys. So, you know, you got to sample. Uh, <laughs> once bitten, twice shy. Like once you have an experience and you didn't like it, why do you keep going back and redoing the same experience? Well, I don't. It's with different guys. It's a new experience. No, but you I could, mean, you could be semantical all you want about it being different guys, but the reality is, at a certain point, you must realize, oh, I'm, I'm not into guys. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. You must realize that, like, I, well, I, I think most people would There's realize, a reason like, oh, why you're here doing we what are you're again. Right. Here I am again, beating off some guy for one reason or another, even though I don't really want to do it at all. That's what the I think we're trying to get at. And I think that's the reason for that sometimes is like there's something there's a reason why you're doing that. It's not because you're being polite because, you know, you do it once, maybe twice, you know, whatever. It's not because, well, you just want to get it over with because you've done it before. You've done it again. If you're in the situation, if you fall, fall into the same situation again. That's, I think, what we're getting at. The the, the thing to learn is you don't need to do it with the same guy because one of these times it will actually be delightful. I'm sure. I, well, you can, I, I, I think if, you had just have a flawed expl- explanation here. That's all I'm saying. If you want to I'm take finding gamble, flaws in this, this example. You can find the flaws all you want. Like, David and I understand each other at this moment. Yeah. If you want to take the gamble over and over again, to if you want to fuck... 90 guys to have like maybe five good experiences that's your choice i'm saying was it really worth the 90 total to have the five that were good or maybe you could be a little different about your approach and your selection to have more of the better and the reason i phrase it that way is because there's something i think underneath about why someone would keep doing that I had to learn that for myself. Why did I keep going to the adult bookstore? Why did I keep cruising like with all these anonymous guys? What was going on with me? And the reality is that I hated myself. Like I didn't see myself as attractive or acceptable, Mm -hmm. whatever, that other people would be interested in me. And the only way I could be with another person is through a random hookup and where there was no like emotional connection and there was no anything else at that moment. And, but then I got addicted to it because it like it was just this self-fulfilling kind of cycle. It's like, oh, I can go to an adult bookstore, I can suck a guy off, he gets off, he leaves, he seems happy, and by happy I mean like he got off and then he zipped up and left. Um and so like that makes me feel good temporarily because I did this thing for this other person, but then that goes away. And then I just started the cycle all over again. Mm -hmm. And it took a while until I finally realized, like, my life was just falling apart because of this behavior that I had taken on. Because it was starting to, like, absorb my waking hours. Like, I would work. And then because I was working in hospitality in, in a restaurant, like, afterwards, then I would go cruising. And then at a certain point, I'd give up on cruising because either nobody was around or it was late or, you know, bar crowd had already dissolved. (laughs) Mm -hmm. and i was like okay i gotta go home like go home pass out get up like it was you know wash rinse repeat and after doing that for like a couple weeks into months i was like what am i doing with my life like what is going on here and i started like thinking about it and realizing like i had started build up this whole pattern behavior because i didn't think that highly of myself i didn't think of myself in in that much in self-worth and i was finding my self-worth through other people Mm -hmm. so that's where I'm coming from. Like, I think, and I, it might be yeah, easier. I think I'm just not that getting colors. grasping the concept. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, I don't... Continue. I'm just going to sit over here. <laughs> I'm trying to read up on what's in the, the chat. <laughs> the reluctant hand job. Cute. <laughs> well, so, right. So, oh, it says reluctant blow job. Now, you're making me recall the reason I was getting him off in the first place. Really bad at speaking up, but I was more into his friend. Aha. Uh, That's a whole uh, other uh, episode about <laughs> hookups that you don't want to do because you try to get to something else. 
<laughs> Just remember that for another day. Um, Pencil it in. <laughs> uh, I just, I think part of it often, and I think what the the main issue with regards to, I think, this kind of topic is, you know, we were, there are certain things that everyone doesn't like about themselves. Like, you may not like how much you weigh, you may not like mm-hmm. your hair, or your skin, your what have you. There are things that you don't necessarily like about yourself. And some things you can change. Mm-hmm. Some things, not everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to figure out why you want to change it. Because that's my biggest thing. Like, is there a reason? Why do you want to change certain things? Like, we talked about, so I'll put it like this. So, okay, I'm going to put use a perfect example. A friend of mine recently, um, for health reasons and personal reasons, but mostly for health reasons, had um, like surgery, had gastro bypass mm-hmm. surgery, or one of those surgeries to kind of lose weight. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a bigger bearish guy, you know, very, very nice looking guy as a bear, but you know, for like again, health reasons and you know, maybe mm-hmm. probably personal reasons, he had to do this surgery. He had to get something done because he could not control his weight problems on his own. Mm-hmm. Well, since then, he has gotten hit you know, day after day, often, you know, several times a day with nothing but people criticizing and calling, you know, calling him ugly, calling him like, why did you lose the weight? Telling people like asking him and being just basically assholes about this whole situation. It's, it's part of our, and you know, I don't understand he's what he, but what he's doing essentially is he's kind of calling him out for it, which First of all, kudos to him. But, you know, you got to realize, like, that, you know, sometimes we do things because we we need to. Sometimes mm-hmm. we do things because we have to. Right. And it takes a level of personal self-love to take care of yourself. Because mm-hmm. you need to take care of yourself. It's your body. You're only going to have it for so much, you know, so many years. And if you don't take care of it, you're going to lose it and you're going to die. Right. Um, but on the flip of that, if you get like constantly barraged by negativity about doing the things that you felt you needed to do, that could potentially lead you down a path of going back to where you started. Because you're wanting those people, are you wanting it to stop? Are you wanting, you know, um, those people to accept you or like you? So you, instead of doing what you did, you now go back to what you were for the sake of other people and not necessarily for yourself. Right. I mean, and I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. Like, I'm not sorry. I feel bad mm-hmm. hearing that other people are like uh, weight loss shaming him. Like, I'm not yeah. sure how to phrase that. Like, yeah, it's I understand that people may be displeased because this person is no longer like the size that they were before and they may have liked them that way. Um, but <laughs> You know, they Mm -hmm. did it for themselves, you know, and Mm -hmm. so it's like if you've got an issue with that, then you have an issue with that, you know, like it's just. Yeah. And it's oftentimes seen as they're reflecting his success on their lack of success. Right. I mean, and I think that's that's one possibility is that they're like looking and saying, oh, this person is being, you know, extra super successful. Why am I not being that way? You know, well, no offense. First of all, you're all different individuals. Mm-hmm. And second of all, like, you know, different life circumstances, so on and so forth. You know, like recently a friend of mine is, you know, made some decisions about changes in their life. And I'm completely very mixed about it. I don't think that they're making bad decisions. I've, I'm have i wrapping my head around the fact that I'm uncomfortable with the changes. Mm-hmm. Because... I was okay with the way things were before. Mm-hmm. And now that's really making me like kind of reconsider like, but was everything okay before? Maybe not. And I just wasn't aware of it or paying attention to it. You know, it's, it's, it's something of that sort that I think is, you know, something that we don't really pay attention to. You know, it's like, well, our community is all about love. 
you know, mm-hmm. we're all proud of ourselves and, you know, what it takes to have strength of who you are and to come out and, and all these things that we say, you know, last month was Pride Month. And so, yeah, yeah you know, we had this discussion about self-love and all that jazz. But then if, you know, if that's really the message, then why are we tearing each other down? Why are we, you know, uh, skinny shaming, fat shaming, like mm-hmm. pick, pick whatever, fill it in, like... I called my dad on this yesterday. My dad was telling me, you know, about how he like somebody was pissed off and didn't talk to him for years. And then he explained about how he told a joke about them in front of them in a group of people and how everybody but that person laughed. Mm. And I looked at my dad and I was like, okay. And I w- and my dad was like, you know, he took it too personally. I was like, actually, I think he probably felt bullied. And my dad just kind of stared at me. I was like, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, and what was bothering me is I'm sitting right next to him, my father. And I'm like, do you see me? Like, do you see me for who I am? Not only am I your child, but I am a fat person. I'm a large person. Like, I'm pretty Mm -hmm. much the largest I've ever been in my entire life. And I'm well aware of this. I'm very self-conscious of this. Mm -hmm. And, like, thinking about, like, changing it and like not going through like things I've done in the past drastically. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, and it was just so mind blowing to me because the whole thing about the joke was being told was like, it was a reference to this person's weight. And I'm just like, like, am I, is this really happening? Like, is this the twilight zone? Is this candid camera? Like, I don't understand what's going on at this moment that like my parent is saying this thing to me and is completely oblivious to the fact that they are literally delivering a message of hate straight to my face mm-hmm. like i was just like well, I, so i tried politely to like respond and say he probably felt bullied like because he didn't find it funny in the least bit and what's even worse is that everybody else found it funny mm-hmm. like yeah. and it's like and there's a part of me that's like i don't think i'll ever be able to get through because I don't think he's ever been in that circumstance or felt that way. Or if he has, I don't know it because he's kept it bottled up and never opened up and talked about it in his life. And sometimes the biggest bullies in life are the people who are the most self-hating. Yep. You know, they, they got issues about themselves or whatever. And so I just like, I was really kind of blown away by that. And I was like, okay, so that's a thing. Um, (laughs) but I, I think a lot of that stuff, you know, happens around us all the time and we internalize it. And it's worse as a community because I think we say one thing, but then we don't necessarily do that. You know, um, we have a pride event, but then we don't necessarily make it equal, you know, access for everybody or make sure that there's the fair representation. And don't get me wrong. Like it is, it is extremely difficult to constantly be on top of all of it. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's basically impossible because the goal is perfection. Do you know what I mean? Where everybody's represented, everyone feels welcome, everyone's involved, you know, that kind of a stuff. Um, my father being mostly in a wheelchair for mobility when we go places, it drives me crazy about going places and them not thinking about like accessibility. Like, you know, that, oh, well, I can understand that like there's a threshold between the door like one side and the other but you do realize that people have to be able able to go over it Mm -hmm. right like like for those of us that walk and use our feet we step over things but when you're in wheels you have to push over the barrier Mm -hmm. and so like what might not seem like that big a deal is actually difficult when you have a couple hundred pound person in a wheelchair and you're trying to get them up and over an object it's just it's it's weird things that like that that like I'm very much like attuned to I guess now and I think about um, you know but my biggest thing is really honestly grocery shopping and I realize <laughs> I'm on a rant right now but it just drives me crazy because I'm like well you please put fucking displays in the middle of like aisles or on the ends of aisles or whatever like people are in wheelchairs or motorized scooters it's no wonder shit doesn't get knocked down all the time. It's like it's an object. It's in the way. I understand that it's a marketing and promotional kind of thing, but you like that's the, that's what I mean. Is like people don't realize, mm-hmm. like, well, this is a thing, you know. And like in a weird way, it's a subliminal message about that you're not important and you don't matter because I don't consider you. I don't mm-hmm. think about that 
XYZ factor. Um, and maybe in a way that's very, you know, self involved, you know, that we don't think about that kind of stuff. I think I've talked about this on the podcast before many years ago and putting on the event, someone, the feedback got to me that the event was like chaser phobic. Mm, and I, I was this. like, what? And I was like, hold up. Like what bothered me most about it was that I had never considered it. So that was like where obviously it was false to begin with to me. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, I don't think you can have a phobia of something if you're not ever really interacting with that thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. like I was kind of like, if I knew them and I didn't want them here, that's one thing. But that was not the case. It was like, you know, I realized that perhaps like the way it was phrased was incorrect, but there was a reality and perception that the event was not necessarily that open. But then I took it even further and I was like, well, to be fair, yeah, I can understand. Like there's not necessarily a whole lot of individuals of color coming to the event or, you know, age range or size. I mean, like I just, you know, pick a box, you know, on a demographic, choose to fill it in or whatever. And so that's one of the things that I'm aware of. But it's also difficult when you are the de facto majority and you don't have that much involvement with other, you know, individuals or communities or representation um, in that. You know, it's one of the things that I've been thinking about. It's like in the coming year, it's like, well, how do we have, you know, more involvement, so to speak? And we've talked about this before on the podcast about, you know, how to approach and not make it um, mm-hmm. how to how to approach and not make it seem like you're trying to win favor, I guess. Um in a way. And I think that, you know, we, we get really in our own bubbles of our lives and don't even realize that part of that, like being in our own bubble can be a way of like projecting certain issues or certain things towards other people, how we, how we handle stuff, what we do with that. Um, sorry, I'm looking back into the live chat. It's okay. Oh, interesting about the Chris Pratt effect. And I just saw a meme thing about that recently. Yeah. Someone said, can we replace Chris Pratt with Chris something or other? I don't remember who it was now. I think there's often this, you know, I'm just going to put it out because there, there's there been a lot of stuff. So if you know Jason Momoa, Aquaman, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. You know, did we all see the whole like article about his people not liking his dad bod? That's where that's referencing, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, what, what, like, like, have you looked at his body? Like, even with the some weight or some, you know, some poundage on him, like, he still looks good to, 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 I think, to many people. But for some reason, we have to make an article about this, which goes into the whole, like, potentially self conscious bullshit, you know, bullshit. Like, I don't know if Jason Momoa will ever see it. I don't care. You know, not that I don't care, but like, that's the part of it. Like he could see that and then like go to that drastic end to please all those other people. Cause like, Oh shit. Like I should probably go back to the gym and beef up because people like me better when I was thinner or healthier looking, mm. you know, right. and go to that extreme. And then we have like, I mean, that was the whole thing, fucking thing that happened with Karen Carpenter years ago. Like, you know, Someone told her that, like, she got a little fat and she went to the extreme and essentially died from from it. Right. You know, we also have to be careful about how we engage others. You know, my friend, for example, people yelling all this shit about him, like, you know, he needs to he looked better when he was fatter like or whatever. Like, that doesn't help. That doesn't build people up. That does not in any way, shape or form make people feel better saying something about you look better when you're skinny or hell when you look better when you're fatter are just like the worst things to say to people you never don't know what's going on with them you don't know if there's some they're taking a medication because they now have a you know serious health problem and the medication causes them to you know gain weight or lose weight or whatever you're now putting something in their head that you don't know about which could potentially lead them down a path and that's yeah yeah, I, I think it's I think it's really difficult for people to gauge 
where others are because we're so disengaged now Mm -hmm. more than ever. Like we don't really have conversations with people. Like one of the things that we do at this podcast, which I think is like, this is where I think there's different kinds of podcasts that are out there. Cause I've been listening to a bunch. In fact, on the way home, my dad and I were returning from vacation. We listened to a bunch and I realized all the ones that I selected were interviews. Whether mm. we're, where there were people talking to each other, which is kind of what we've done, you know, from time to time here on the show and between the three of us, we talk. But that's the key. Like we have a conversation as opposed to just, you know, texting each other or mm-hmm. commenting on something or whatever. Um, and yes, while we're using social media and we're using a platform of technology, we're at least like engaging in a way to hear each other and to talk to each other. But I think that like that's falling by the wayside in terms of actual connections between people. So I think it's far easier for people to be critical of each other when they don't have that connection. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like what, what yeah. Damon's talking about with his friend, if that were me and Damon, and let's say that Damon had lost weight, I personally know Damon. I would probably not s- say that to him. Mm -hmm. because i've actually met him in person and had a conversation with him and i think that's one of the the items that is missing now and like in our interactions is that like sure we have like thousands of people we're connected with online whatever but we don't really know them like we don't Mm -hmm. see them and we don't hang out with them and so yeah it becomes a real challenge to um i guess be authentic and to have a realistic thing. And we also have this weird, like, you know, and it's been talked about, I think in studies and stuff that we have this disconnect emotionally that we don't understand the impact of things. Like, um, there was a reminder on a podcast I was listening to yesterday in which, uh, and this was, I don't know if you guys heard about this with Sarah Silverman, like on her Twitter, some guy comments, like commented her like on a post or something that she had put out and he used the C word. Like he, went straight for the jugular, as I say. Mm. It was really inappropriate. And instead of putting him on blast and like making a snarky comeback, she like researched his online profile and realized that he had a lot of like self hate. Like he was complaining all the time. He was in miserable life. Like there was all this stuff. And so she ended up reaching out to him. And my understanding, if I recall correctly, is the story goes that she actually reached out and realizes that he needed assistance with his mental health. And so she made sure that he got it and he actually like got his life better and they actually are friends and actually direct message each other. Like she turned the whole thing around because she saw in this moment, like this person who's like spewing this stuff, actually this has got nothing to do with her. Mm -hmm. Like this is really about him in that moment. And I think that like that takes a certain kind of way to see things or recognize stuff. And I think that's therein lies the challenge to say, oh, okay, like this, this is really more about me and not about that other individual in this case. Um, You know, and, and I think we're also very like, you know, self-centered in our world now, thanks to technology, because, you know, everything comes at us instead of things going out, you know? So it's like, you know, oh, well I need and this thing and, you know, whatever. And it's like, it's all about filling or fulfilling us when, maybe we don't necessarily see that like you know i know people that are like disengaging and disconnecting and different stuff like that and from what i can tell from what's you know going on because i don't see these people in person that much because they live a distance away from me they are doing better they are happier and i'm happier for them and i'm intrigued by that you know and i'm trying to do some of that um you know but there's this whole chemical brain process, you know, becomes addictive about the payoff because I got another notification, I got a like, I got a comment, mm-hmm. I got a thing, you know, I got a dick pic sent to me, whatever it is. Um, not really. Uh, well, anyways, I was kind of subconscious. Um, so <laughs> the, the thing is, is that I think we, there's a lot of different representations of how we handle ourselves and we might not realize like how that comes across to other people and more importantly how it impacts other people. And so yeah. I get that like there's a concept of like, you know, people just don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether or not like someone being kind of net neutral, whether or not that's really any form of self-hatred or not. Like 
and by that I mean like some people were just not invested one way or another mm-hmm. you know they're just living their life and kind of going about their thing and I think that if they could truly be that way then perhaps they don't really have those issues that to address or you know they're not necessarily yeah. impacting in other ways it's difficult I don't know I'm not that person I'm very yeah hyper aware of myself and my space and things that I do and who I'm with and those kind of things. Um, a lot of that manifested through my youth and being very self-conscious and feeling like a very big, large fat person and being unwelcome and being made fun of. And so I absorbed all of that and it turned into, you know, a person who is constantly like aware of their surroundings and who they are and how they, do things around other people and you know yes i get very irritated because people just like kind of do whatever the fuck they want and i'm like really like like you have no regard for other people you know in certain situations um you know and i mean it's kind of like (laughs) this is sort of a tangent then we'll go to wrap up i think i was was with a person who made a comment about how quiet i am and (laughs) <laughs> hear me Sounds out David so weird so yeah. wait a minute what is that supposed to mean well it's, continue it, it, it's it, it means it's not just David <laughs> <laughs> all right so well I am very verbose I am very quiet when I'm with a person mm-hmm. and so this person pointed out like that I was being very like quiet and they said like what's going on with that and i was like what do you mean and they're like well you know you're not very like uh i guess emotive very verbal and i was like well why would i be and they're like well why wouldn't you be so it's it it's not meant to be like antagonistic like they were trying to challenge me to get me upset or anything but they were really trying to help me like because they felt like i think you're being repressed like i think you're being quiet i think you're holding back and I had to think about yeah. it. Is it is was this in a case where it was like among like workplace people, or is this more of he was wondering why you weren't grunting and growing and being verbal? <laughs> I'll take door number two, Monty. Um, <laughs> yeah, option B. Okay, was, I just wanted to make sure I was in the right. Yeah, answer. no, no, no. It was it was you know sexy time. It was intimacy. It was you know one on one. Instead of going, ah, 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 you were, you were just like, ah. or not at all. Right. So the thing is, is that I said, you know, that I was very self-conscious about being vocal and the person was like, but why? And I was like, well, at the moment for the story, we were in a hotel room and they were like, and and i was like and there are people all around us <laughs> like <laughs> on the other side of that wall there could be people or just being us, considered or our or neighbors right like, like, there could right. be people all over <laughs> and they were like but why do you care i was like because i don't want to become a nuisance or you know infringe on whatever their experience is and it was interesting because they challenged it and they said well Why do you care so much about being a nuisance or a bother to them when they don't care about you? And I was like, okay, like it was an interesting moment to like really kind of consider, but that's, that's a part of my, you know, when those kind of got a point there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with what they were saying and what they were pointing out because I don't I don't also agree with it completely because there was a part of me that's like, well, not everyone in the world just bulldozes through it with disregard for everybody else. True. It, most, it's it's, it's most, along like, the lines of the golden rule. Uh, treat others as you would like to be treated. Right. Right. So you, Jeff. you would not like to necessarily hear the ah, 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 coming from the next door. So you're just not going to do that for other people. Right. Speak for yourself. I was not talking about you, David. I was talking about I know. Gary, the considerate. I know. One, right? Right. Oh, <laughs> wow. Just totally call that out. 
He left it. Now, right there. fast forward to. And hey, uh, that's not time. shade. That's tea. Oh. <laughs> so, Got both. <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, David's like. Oh. So for me, Touché. fast forward to a different experience. Mm-hmm. Where I'm at a campground. Uh huh. And I am with two individuals. I may have talked about this before in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. possibly. So for, sure. for for the new for the new people, uh, welcome to the new to the new version of the story because I'm probably gonna not remember it correctly. Um, but so I'm with two individuals, and we go back to their tent, and we're having fun. And one of them kind of makes a comment about me being quiet, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm just trying not to um, bother other people." And they were like, "It's a gay campground." <laughs> Like they're not going to be bothered, right? Like you haven't heard other people here. Now, to be fair, it was daylight, so it wasn't like it was three in the morning when people were trying to sleep. True, and so I took that into consideration, and I decided, what the hell? Um. And here's the thing you need to understand: if people are very <laughs> repressed in their lives. Usually when they're unrepressed, it's almost the exact opposite. Doors come flying off. (laughs) (laughs) So when I had my orgasm, I was very loud. (sighs) Really, Jeff? (sighs) No, it's not necessary. I didn't ask you to. See, there's a whole I, I, thing. So, <laughs> anyway, I wanted to. Yeah, well, I wasn't needing it. Um, but the whole point is, like, after I had my orgasm, and the other two individuals, like, they had already kind of gotten off, and they really wanted me to get off. So I ended up having my orgasm. The looks on their faces immediately told me, "Yep, that's what I was afraid of." <laughs> <laughs> Because, right, right. See, I know myself. I understand these things, but no, Mm -hmm. you said, go ahead. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. As someone who is, who kind of lived that, that similarly life, like don't, you know, be very, you know, quiet during sex when I'm in that moment, like, and I, I can get kind of loud. I'm not like loud, loud, but I get loud. Mm -hmm. Like, especially when I have no fucks to give. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this from all of this we can definitely tell there is not self-hatred and Jim's wondering what the fuck is going on (laughs) well so my point (laughs) of telling that example is like I I've been very self-conscious about like myself and so I maintain like a, a complete awareness usually most of the time in the moment like where I am physically what's going on the surroundings all that kind of stuff but that also have felt like I regretted when I chose to not be self as self-conscious or self-aware <laughs> or to say fuck it and not give any cares because in said instance in which I was very loud, then reality sets in and I realize I have to leave the tent <laughs> in the daylight. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure the whole area of where we were tenting at, no pun which intended, called, which is called Tent Valley, heard Again, me. No, no pun intended. Right. So I'm thinking the. Now, were you exiting 30... nude as well? No. Okay. But it doesn't matter when, if you're loud <laughs> enough, pretty much all of life stops. People are no longer talking. <laughs> like if they were cooking. Did they give you applause at got... least? No. Not that I recall. <laughs> I probably would have been even more embarrassed. Oh, um, oh. I would have bowed. When birds stop chirping, crickets start stop singing. <laughs> like when the whole world comes to a hushed <laughs> silence afterwards, it's a little mortifying. <laughs> that's when, that's when you stand there and just take your bow and wait for the applause. 
Well, you would do that. I, on the other hand, did not. I was mortified, which just feeds back into the self-hate cycle about why <laughs> I'm not vocal. I think I got a lot of self-confidence from, from being in theater. Like, maybe that's just me, but... There, I've done theater. Theater is is planned, controlled, like it's an environment. I'm on a stage. There's lights. Like there's a whole different thing. What I was just describing Every day was in improv thing. class. <laughs> so that that's an example of how I think we treat ourselves and have to be careful about experiences and stuff. Now, yeah. since then. Uh, I'll wrap this up with a more pleasant story. Um, had a very sure. lovely experience when I was in out of town with somebody who I had long had a crush on and we actually met up and then we ended up hooking up and then we had really good sex. And <laughs> like, it's one of my fondest memories today. And good I girl. was vocal. I also notably like practically inhaled a pillow to try to not be loud. Like, so I was being very loud. It was very muffled. I don't know if anybody else thought someone might have been being murdered. I'm not really sure. So it was more of. <laughs> They're always going to get sound effects from Jeff. I mean, he has the soundboard, so he kind of has to do something. I'm not even <laughs> using the soundboard. I know you're not using the soundboard. I'm just saying it. So that being said, I don't think I've cured my self-consciousness mm -hmm. uh which stems from you know some level of like uh hate against myself about being loud i just have figured out how to like i guess handle it or deal with mm -hmm. it appropriately in that case so that's i think more of the bigger thing for everybody to be aware of is first understanding like what motivates you like why you do the things that you do and then more importantly mm -hmm. If you do find that you're doing stuff and it's not necessarily because it's in your best interest, like how to start making small changes to address that mm -hmm. in some way, whether it's like unintentionally bullying other people and cutting them down mm -hmm. um, and saying stuff like it kind of goes the whole thing. Like if you don't have anything nice to say, then just don't say it. Um, and that's really hard because in the gay community specifically, especially amongst gay men, we have a preponderance to be very catty and, you know, to say shit about each other yeah. because, you know, oh, we're just throwing shade. No, no, it's tea. Like, you know, however you want to rephrase that. But the reality is that we, we do it because we get something out of it. We just need to probably tune in and be more aware of like how it's affecting others. People, in that case. Mm -hmm. people need to have more empathy. Yeah. For, exa for example. True. Yeah. For example. Uh, and we should wrap it up because my iPad just told me that I've got 30 minutes before I need to go to bed. Um, so earlier we were talking about the whole, like, you weren't hotter when you were fatter sort of comment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think that. It's like somebody was more attractive when they were heavier, skinnier, whatever. <laughs> um, but there was, that's how you were, they were to you. Do you express this? Like, there's at least one person I know who's watched a lot of weight. He's very happy about it. Am I ever going to say, say you were hotter when you were fatter or I was more attracted to you when you're fatter? Because right now, the way he looks, he's not attractive to me. But am I going to say that to him? Hell right. no. Why? Because I think he's a great guy. And he's got a really cute, fluffy dog. Um, which is also helpful. Um, it, and it's, I'm not going to say that because he was very proud of his stuff and I want him to be empowered with how he is and be the way he is. And mm -hmm. if I'm not attractive, I'm just, I'm just not attracted. I don't care. It, it, he doesn't care. Right. You know, it's just not going to happen anyway. So I think the difference, Jeff, is if they it's having that you, empathy, if they ask me, I would probably be more of like a, well, I don't find you really attractive right now. Well, but I think that's like, that's where the delivery is important, but I think that's a more appropriate right. moment to have that kind of a conversation. Right. When you, the, when the key being a he's conversation. Looking for, right. When he's not looking a, for not a yeah. random, like, Oh, it's such a shame. You went and lost all that weight. 
Yeah. Like, nobody random. asked you, bitch. <laughs> Fuck the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and that conversation, right. that the way of communicating any of that is dealing with empathy of when you say something, when you don't say something, and how you say it. Um, and having that empathy helps people with their own self, self-worth, self, uh, self-love. If they liked the way they look, they wanted to lose those pounds, then you need to empower that and feel the empathy of how they feel and mm-hmm. work with how they feel, not necessarily how, how you feel. And, uh, you know, maybe I could say that I have a little bit of self-hatred to finding somebody on her when they were fatter. I don't like that. I don't like that I feel that way, but um, especially about good people. So, but that's, that's really the key of it all though, Jeff is like, like that's authenticity. That's true to who we are to recognize. So it's, I don't suppose it's self-hatred. It's just, maybe I don't feel like that's one of my best qualities. Right. But that, but that's, that's really what it comes down to. Like, and the fact that you have that capacity to recognize like, oh, I don't like that about myself. Like, it doesn't mean that you hate yourself but you have a moment where you say i could probably do different like i could choose a different way to be i could not make this comment i could make sure do whatever again empathy yeah Mm -hmm. um and also like turning it around you know and being and instead of beating yourself up like maybe moving a little bit more towards the middle ground like being more neutral about it instead of you know Mm -hmm. being so negative about whatever the the decision is in that case so that yeah. being said, uh, that was a lively conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's also, effects and all. It's also the end of the show. Oh. Anyways, there's plenty of ways to contact us and support us. Uh, you can pop over to our website, CubsOutloud.com. Uh, shoot us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361-COL-TALK. It's 361-265-8255. You can also, like, if you want to do a voicemail but don't want to call or if you're, like, overseas and don't want to deal with the whole, like, calling to America sort of thing, you can also uh, just, like, record a voice memo on your phone and email it to us at uh, you can also find us at various social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, right here on YouTube. Uh, and you can join our Entourage chat, talk to people, and there's been a bunch of Tummy Tuesdays and other things lately. Uh, so, And you never know when these come up. Seriously, it's a surprise. It's just spontaneous. Uh, but if you want to find that, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you want to find out when we're recording these, uh, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You have to do that on your computer. Um, but uh, once you have that subscribed to your computer, you'll be able to look at it in any device. Uh, you can sub- 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 support us at uh, our uh, Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, there's plenty of stuff that you might find, such as this version cute little version one logo t-shirt or the hat that gary is wearing or the v3 logo shirt that gary is wearing and damon doesn't have any of our merchandise on so i can't really say anything for about that not today Uh, i did have some chili from the col soup mug Mm -hmm. which is amazing i love that Mm -hmm. mug so we got some great stuff there uh you can also support us by just being a patron uh, at patreon.com slash cubs out loud you can rate us on itunes subscribe to us google play podcast and spotify um and you can find me anywhere in the internet as box at box puppy box cub box something or other you can find me as theater cubs 79 on most bear related sites and facebook or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter and if you would like to get in touch with me you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gabber 73 and by the way, patrons, if y'all would like to read your email and reply back, that'd be nice. Thank you. We have some questions. And with that, <laughs> say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>